Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Moyer and this is an overview of scanner invariant representations of paper coming out this year with my advisors Greg Versteeg and Paul Thompson and on the paper itself Chantal Tax. So many of us at Biddle are looking at supervised problems where we have data X, usually a medical image, and we're trying to predict labels Y, uh, diagnoses or other clinical outcomes um, or other phenotypes. And alongside these variables, we often have a scanner variable or a site context variable, S, um, but it usually doesn't matter because we only have one site. Um, so we can't even investigate this variable. However, uh, for multi-site analyses, uh, the data might be biased by each site. And so if our predictive algorithm learns these biases and learns to predict based on these biases, we will learn something that is not generalizable to new incoming unknown sites. So what can we do about that? We could, of course, just ignore it, but then we're leaving variants in our system, so we're necessarily going to perform suboptimally. We could also try and produce a conditional model, so we could try and model the effect of each site on our outcome, but it's hard to know in these cases that we've actually removed the bias. Instead, we propose learning a representation Z in the gray dot in the middle that is independent of our site variables s. So we want to learn a mapping q, which takes our data x to z, uh, con uh, constrained to be independent of s. Then whatever we do with z, uh, we're guaranteed by the data processing inequality that uh, downstream tasks using z are also independent of s. Of course, learning under independence constraints is very difficult. So we can re relax this to a regularizer that minimizes the mutual information between Z and S. How do we do that in practice? We're going to start with a conditional autoencoder. Um, so this is a fairly common operation. And then we're going to add to it that regularizer, the mutual information between Z and S. Um, and we're going to use a bound for it, which we derived in our 2018 paper. Um, this bound is composed of two parts, a conditional reconstruction, which fits with our conditional autoencoder, and a compression term. Empirically, we actually uh, find that you can replace the compression term with a simpler compression term and do up, up, about just as well. The actual limitation is a little more complicated because we want to use adversarial losses and because we want to use diffusion-specific loss terms. Um, but it is, in spirit, essentially a conditional autoencoder. We can train this without pairing between subjects. So we don't need examples of different subjects uh, scanned at multiple sites. During testing, however, we can remap each subject to a specific site, S prime, and so receive a, a reconstruction that has the same bias across all images. Of course, we can also just use the siteless encoding Z. For the CDMRI challenge, which is a harmonization challenge, we're measuring the error between those remapped uh, test time examples where we're trying to map everyone to the same site. And as you can see, we're doing very well against a uh, current baseline. We are in the green and the blue. It's also possible to measure the remaining bias in our representation by predicting uh, the original site from the reconstructed image. And uh, on the far left is the best possible score, uh, and lower is better. Our full model in the second column does fairly well. Um, but then we also have two ablation tests, which replace various parts of our regularizer um, with either a simpler uh, compression term, which is the third column, or no compression term at all, which is the fourth column. Um, and in both cases, uh, they show degradation to the performance. Um, so we're fairly certain that a compressive regularizer is what we want here. For more information, please see the paper, which is on archive, or of course, send me any questions that you have. Uh, we'd like to thank our funding agencies and the middle organizers, and also you for watching this video. Thank you.